Hello, welcome back to Garden Obsessed. My name is Carla. Um, today it is gloomy and rainy out, so I thought it might be a good day to do a seedling tour. Um, the lights are nice and bright, and it's green and lush and getting lusher every day, and I thought that would be a good idea. So let's go do that. All right, so this is the grow room currently aka the laundry room. We've got quite a bit going on. Um, these three trays here are ranunculus and anemones. They need to be outside now, um, but we had some crazy windstorm weather um, up until yesterday and I didn't want them to get the snot beaten out of them, so I will start transitioning those to outside and if there are any, there are a few, um, that are further behind, they could even potentially be planted outside right now as long as there's no like foliage above ground where I am in Zone 5 Canada. So our last frost date is not until it's usually around the 25th or so of May, sometimes earlier, sometimes later. So um going to get on top of those shortly. And here we have some peppers. I'll bring those down and give you a gander. So this is what that pepper tray looks like. These were ones um, that I started in soil blocks and potted up uh, maybe four or five days ago. And all of these other ones, they're in various stages of coming up. Some of them aren't quite up yet, but they were all pre-spreaded in paper towel because I have had extremely poor germination with some of my peppers this year. A lot of them were these jalapenos um, and it's because they're old seeds. So I need to do a lot of seed saving this year. So we're gonna do a whole bunch of seed saving. Um, these other ones, this is a new to me pepper. One of the peppers that I had almost total fa failure with was, um, my king of the north peppers which are like our main bell pepper so i was terrified i wasn't gonna have any bell peppers um so i went and bought this one it's a hybrid um but i kind of like the name it's called fat and sassy which i thought was wonderful so we're gonna give that a go um these are actually a hybrid jalapeno too because i was worried in the beginning we weren't gonna have any jalapenos too um i've never grown this one it's called monet um and it's treated seed you can see here the seed is actually green, but that's fine. Nothing to worry about there. And so we're gonna see how the hybrids um, perform against some of the heirlooms. I think the hybrids are gonna take it. Um, a lot of times I'm, I'm coming to the realization I'm always gonna grow hybrids or heirlooms, sorry. I like the diversity that you can get in a lot of the heirlooms. I like that you can save the seeds, things like that. But in our short growing season, I really like the dependability and the predictability of the hybrids. A lot of them have more disease resistance. A lot of them are better able to withstand some of the crazy weird climate things that we've had going on, um, drought and <laughs> floods in the same season last year. So that's just, a decision I'm making for our garden and not everyone has to make it. There's a random little, um, I think it's uh, either thyme or lavender that seeded itself and I just transplanted in here because it had nowhere to go. But anywho, this is some of the peppers. Okay, so next shelf down, this is a lot of edibles that we're eating inside now. So these are the oldest lettuce. Um, they've had three major um, harvests from them and some partial harvests. These are the youngest lettuce. Um, we have some more lettuces over here and also some bok choy. Um, these are probably nearing the end of their life, although they've kind of kept going. They're not bolting yet. So as long as they keep producing, we'll keep picking the leaves and stuff. And we also have some microgreens. So these two um, I've partially harvested. This is probably going to be their last little flush now. And these are, I think these were broccoli rob seeds 
that we started together. So they are 11 days old now maybe. So this whole thing is ready to be harvested and I will tell you, I think this is my preferred container. So we'll definitely be doing that again. Here we have, these are all flowers. So these front three here are all wave petunias. Um, we've got, let me see, yellow, coral reef, um, rose fusion, that's white, burgundy, and blue. They're doing awesome. This was pelleted seed that I got this year from Geo. It's my first time ordering from there. It was expensive. The shipping was not cheap, but far cheaper to order bulk amounts of seed from them than to, you know, buy a packet of 10 at a time. And these will be for our seedling sale this year. In the back here, I have some snapdragons. I had some quite old um, pansy seeds. So I got some sporadic germination there, but that's all I'll need for around the house. And then these are a different kind of petunia that I'm growing for the first time. Um, not pelleted seed, not not like a special fancy mix or anything. They'll probably go in the green stock or in a hanging basket or something. Um, next row down. So the very first thing that got planted this year was these strawberries. Jarrett got me, it came with this pot um, and soil and a package of seeds. So um, we planted those on Valentine's Day, which was awesome. He knows me well. <laughs> so um, I potted those up mm, maybe a week, week and a half ago. They were about this size um, when I potted them up and some of them are going gangbusters now. So these were the itty bitty ones. I just left them in here and kind of redistributed them and these will actually get potted up now as well. These are geraniums that I will put in our hanging baskets. So they're doing good. You can see a little bit of damage on the cotyledons. I often do this in my carelessness. So this is my warning to you so you do not do the same thing. I have had to learn this lesson 10 times over and I still haven't learned it, I guess. But when you have things under humidity dome and you take the dome off, a lot of times your leaves are damp and wet. And when you take the dome off and put them under lights, it can be very drying and you can get damaged like this. Now, nine times out of 10, they grow out of it just fine. You can see that these are growing out of it. It was just the cotyledons. They were quite small when I did it. So they're rebounding quite nicely. But do as I say, not as I do, and you'll save yourself a lot of headaches. <laughs> On this tray here, we have mostly herbs. Um, there's some parsley, Greek oregano. I've got this very heavily seeded lavender. It's a kind I've never grown before. And I usually have like sporadic germination with lavender. And this was good seed, guys. Um, so I will have to thin that out at some point. We've also got some summer savory, some calendula, some Russian tarragon, some celery. These guys, I just kind of um, multi-sewed them in this pot here. I'll separate out some of these probably now-ish. They're big enough now to separate. And these are two jalapenos. I was worried about having, having pepper plants. So um, I potted these, I didn't pot them up. I planted them in um, the arrow gardens and one of them took off like gangbusters. This one's growing like crazy. These are actually about the same si or same age as those other peppers that I showed you. I find a lot of times in the hydroponics, they grow a lot quicker initially than some of your seedlings in soil. And then this is some lobelia and this will all just be personal use as well. So over here we have some of my peppers and you'll see why I had cause of concern. So this was a new package that I bought when I had failure in the beginning of some of the other ones. So, um, Craig's Grande is one I really like. The seed was really old. I don't have any germinated in this round. Um, and I did, I do have some more up in um, paper towels, mostly the sweet peppers because a lot of the sweet peppers failed as well. There's my lone King of the North pepper out of 20 seeds. Um, so those were all sweet peppers. So I do have some, but that's not enough. Definitely probably would be enough for just our garden, but this is supposed to be for our seedling sale too. So there will be more peppers that you guys will see. 
Um, and then these were some randoms. A lot of them were hot. Um, and they, they had, some of them had some poor germination too. So definitely need to be saving some seeds this year. This is mostly onions. I think I tell you guys every year that I'm terrible at growing onions and I'm never going to try again. And inevitably I cave in and I try again. So we're trying again. So I have three different kinds. I've got Elsa Craig, Patterson, and some leftover Walla Wallas from last year. Um, fingers crossed guys, <laughs> we're trying, we're trying our darndest. Um, there is a sweet marjoram that had really poor germination. It, I mean, there's two little sprouts there. That's all I'll actually need. And then these pots have some more of those pre-spreaded seeds, um, that from the paper towel upstairs, they're not above the surface yet. Now, moving on down, I'm going to have to pause and pull some trays out to show you. Okay, first tray. Um, I've got some lettuce here. Mostly, I think they're um, going to have good germination. I'm not so sure about the winter density there. Um, it is a couple years old. And I'm finding lettuce seed doesn't last as long as I thought it did. So I'm going to try to use up a whole bunch of our lettuce seed this year and hopefully do some seed saving and kind of refresh those stores. This has some interesting stuff. I am trying to grow the Clancy potato, which I believe is the only potato that you can grow true from seed, um, not from tuber. So I just planted these the other day, so none of this stuff is up yet. Um, but I'm interested interested to see how these are. I've also got some cucamelons, some um, husk berries, and some eggplants here. This is all of our paste tomato, or no, this is the marigold. Sorry, the paste tomatoes are in the other in the other box. Um, I really like lemon gem. It's one of those tiny flowered, and they kind of like look nice hanging over the side of um, raised beds and stuff. And I'm also growing a bunch of Cracker Jacks. These, um, I think I had some issues with germination last year, so I did save some seed, but I'm wondering if maybe they have kind of spotty germination um, with save seed in general, like maybe there's some maturity issues, like I'm not waiting long enough for the seed to mature, mature. I'm not quite sure. None of these have spreaded yet, but it has only been like, I mean, these were just seeded like four days ago, so I'm not worried yet, even though the Cracker Jack is up. Um, and then we have a Sparky mix, and I think I saw one or two just starting to germinate, but um, it's only been a few days for those as well, so... All right, here are a lot of our tomatoes. So over here, we're growing Scotia 42 Day, Ace 55, and Bush Beefsteaks. Most of these, with the exception, I'll probably grow one of each just for the purposes of saving some more seed, but the rest will be for the seed sale. Um, then we have our paste tomatoes. We're growing Roma and San Marzano. A lot of these I will keep, um, and then all of the extras will be for the seed sale as well. And then over here we have some interesting things. So a lot of these, um, like this half, is dwarf and micro dwarf tomatoes. I haven't grown any of these ones before, so I'm super excited, especially for the Emerald City. I don't know why. It just looks, it's a green tomato, which isn't usually my thing, but it has kind of gold streaks on it and... A lot of people love green tomatoes, so I'm going to give them another chance. Then we have um, Puck um, Dwarf Tomato is new for me this year, too. But then we have three of my favorite heirlooms. We have Kellogg's Breakfast, German Johnson, and Paul Robeson. And we had pretty good germination on all of these. They're still, they're still germinating. Like, you can see, you know, they're still... I think probably we're going to have excellent germination on these guys. Oh, now, last but not least here, we had down here on the heat mat. I do have a second heat mat, but I lent it to my brother and I should have known better that, you know, this is seed starting season. This is when I need them. But anyway, if he needs it, he's welcome to it. Um, and I just have a couple of the um, small, what are they called? Sun blaster lights, I do believe. Um, and you can kind of daisy chain those together. So you just have like one control. 
I'll tell you a little bit about the lights before we get to that tray. These are just LED shop lights on the shelf. And then all of these other ones are the four foot sun blasters. They are um, not LED, they are fluorescent, but I do find, I think they do a better job than these do. And you have more wiggle room. Like these I have mounted high and I don't have to lower them and keep them as close as I do the LEDs. Just a personal preference, everything works. Um, I used to use just shop lights. I just had one shelf that was these sun blasters and um, ended up getting a really good deal on some other of the sun blaster lights and decided to just switch over some of them. But that's neither here nor there. This is the last um, little tray we have and these are all cherry tomatoes. So I have not grown red cherry before. Dancing with Smurfs is my dad's favorite. Sun Sugar is one of my favorites. I have this tomato that I save seeds from, from my, my friends, Sandy and Adam. So I don't know what kind it is. So I just call it Sandy and Adam. And I started quite a few of those because I will keep one or two and give some back to them as well. Then I haven't grown Brad's Atomic Grape for a few years. I tried it... Um, I think it was 2018 or 2019 and I wasn't a huge fan of it, but I'm going to give it another go because a lot of people rave about this tomato. And then of course we have some tiny Tims because who couldn't use some tiny Tims? So that is just a quick overall of what we have going on in the grow room at the end of March in Zone 5 Canada, Nova Scotia. So, um, I will show you a couple of things upstairs before I sign out here. Okay, here in the bathroom, we have some beans growing. You can see that they are starting to flower, which is awesome. Um, there's also some kind of, I don't know if it's a deficiency or if it is um, toxicity. I've recently changed the way I fill or add nutrients to my arrow gardens. I used to just follow, you know, like the two capfuls or three capfuls, depending on the size of your unit every two weeks, and then you top up with water. But now I'm pre-mixing my nutrients and anytime they need water, I top up with that. So I'm not sure if it's a deficiency or if it is um, a toxicity, but I think it's nutrient related. <laughs> Um, and this is like my OG arrow garden. This thing is like 15 years old. It has a fluorescent light. I just replaced it. And I do have another one for when this one goes as well. But this is one of the things we're growing upstairs. Miss Lola is taking a nap here on one of the chairs. But next to her, we have two more arrow gardens. These ones are... Um, well, this one is a little newer than that other one. It has LED lights instead of the fluorescent. And this one is a lot newer. It also has LED lights. This is the little sprout. This one they do not make anymore. Um, I would say it's similar to the model called the Harvest that they have now. Um, so what we have growing here is this is um, a Tiny Tim tomato. It's got lots of blossoms, you can see. So probably um, in about six weeks, we'll be eating cherry tomatoes. And this front one <laughs> is a poor tiny Tim that is reaching out to the side because it's getting shaded out by these other two. Now, these other two are full-size cherry tomatoes um, that I have been pruning. You can see where I've been cutting off the growth points here. Um, trying to wrangle them and keep them a more appropriate size for this unit. These are the, it's a hybrid called Tasty Treat or Tidy Treat. I think it's Tidy Treat. And these are Jared's favorite. So I took cuttings from um, a plant that we bought from a nursery last year. And I'm overwintering them that way. So... I want to try to let these go because it would be nice to have a harvest. You can see that they're flowering um, pretty profusely here as well. So if I can keep them happy-ish 
in this unit, we'll get some cherry tomatoes out of it before the season starts outdoors. And if the plants get too unruly, I mean, their root systems are massive now. There's no way I'll get these out of this unit um, and the plants will remain happy. So probably I will just like take cuttings of, um, you know, any of these sucker, sucker, any of these suckers um, that come off the main plant a little closer to when it's time to plant outside. So um, that's what we have growing upstairs. This is also, <laughs> the tops of these units are actually a really great place for germinating seeds. So this is just a Rubbermaid, um, you know, food container. And in it, I have little pieces of paper towel with different names on it for some of the sweet peppers that I'm trying to germinate. Um, because we had kind of poor germination when I just went directly to the soil blocks. Sometimes the paper towel method, you'll have a little more success, especially with older seeds. So one more thing before we go, I have a rosemary plant here that I'm overwintering as well. So I could totally take cuttings off of this to propagate more plants. I may do that. I may not. I haven't quite decided yet, um, but it's happy-ish here. And I will do this again. I keep thinking I'm done and then I remember more things. So um, this is a fig tree that I purchased last year and am overwintering indoors. There's actually two, that one's quite a bit smaller, but um, it started growing. It didn't stay dormant as long as I had thought and I had hoped. And there's also a parsley plant in a pot down there. Um, so I'm hoping we technically still have about eight weeks before our last frost, but on warm days, this might start going outdoors to get some natural sunlight. It is definitely suffering. This is a north facing window too, um, but it's really the only place I had to put it. Um, so I would like to see it get some more light and some more sunshine. So on those warm days, I will start transitioning these guys outdoors, bringing them in at night. It is that time of year when you do the plant shuffle. Speaking of the plant shuffle, I forgot I had my sweet peas stuck outside as well. So because of the weather we had, these were indoors for quite a while and they are getting leggy, but We'll take cuttings and hopefully that will fix them up. So I hope you enjoyed that little tour. What do you have growing? Um, I'm about to start a lot more things. We are about eight weeks from our last frost. So all of my six to eight week baggies, um, it's time to dig those out and start some more seeds. So I'll be sure to show you guys what I'm starting and definitely we'll do some updates on what's growing in the grow room. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I thank you for stopping by. I hope you come back and we'll see you next time.